Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, it's a new week and there are certain important things I'm going to be sharing with you. Remember, this month the Lord said He is opening the book. And there are lots of events that have started taking place already that you should be kind of mindful off in relation to what the Lord have said. Now we're going to be looking at several things and I have trusted the Spirit of God that indeed we'll, we're going to talk heart to heart and, and share truth that will really, really help you. But you've got to be attentive and follow closely. Praise God. Before going to today's broadcast, can we call forth our daily bread. Are you ready? Join me right now. Release your faith as we declare. Say, Father, I receive now my daily bread. It's coming to me in fullness today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, anytime we make this demand or declaration, sincerely expect a miracle to happen. And I know God is surely going to turn up for you. Praise God. Now, also this week, we're going to be having a program on Friday. This week, Friday, by 5 p.m. at the 3J's Hotel, the Diamond Hall 3J's Hotel at Otako District. Now, this is a program, if you reside in Abuja, this is a program you should not miss. You know, come, come join us for a live meeting. And I'm, I assure you, it's going to be an awesome time. The Lord has been speaking to me concerning this meeting. And lots of things are going to be happening. Lots of things are going to be um, spoken of. Trust in the Holy Spirit for the great and marvelous supply of His Spirit to bless, to heal, to save, and to deliver. So this is not a meeting that if you are around, you should miss. Plan for it this week, Friday, by 5 p.m. at the Three J's Hotels in Otako District, Abuja. Praise God. All right. Now, we've been talking about the opening of the book. And our text is from Revelation chapter number 5. Jesus was able because he prevailed he had the authority to open the book but then when he began to open the book which we spoke about this um, last week when he began to open the book certain things began to happen on earth now the lord told us from the beginning of the month i'm opening the book now what does that mean the seal have already been he has started opening the seal. And then you see what's going on around the world right now. See, when God speaks, the Bible says he will not do anything until he first tells his, his servants, the prophets. See, and sometimes even the prophets may not understand to the full what God is talking about. Like I, I told you last week, I said prophecy, there is no way you'll be able to accurately explain a prophecy that has not been fulfilled. And number two, it is only the Holy Spirit that will confirm that the event that have taken place is the fulfillment of the prophecy that was given. Because sometimes you think, you see people who postulate and say, oh, this is the meaning of this prophecy. And after a while, they change again and say, no, this is the meaning of the prophecy now. Praise God. Now, the truth is, Prophecy is prophecy. There is no English that can explain it. And most times, because it's a futuristic thing, you don't even have the knowledge to explain it. When God told Noah he was going to bring a flood on the earth, how was Noah going to explain that? You see? God told him to build the ark. Now, they are saying, historians are saying, Noah spent 120, from when God spoke to him to build the ark to when 
the flood came. It was 120 years. So it took Noah 120 years to build the ark. Now think about it. Why did it take him that long? Because he was receiving bit by bit instruction from the Lord. He's never seen what rain looks like before. He's never seen what an ark look like, looks like before. So he had nothing to copy. Now the problem with, with, with us today is we judge, we want to judge prophecy that is futuristic with the knowledge we have currently or knowledge of the past. We, we do a lot of error. We make a lot of error when we do that. So leave prophecies. Prophecies are meant to be fulfilled and they are all fulfilled by the Spirit of God. The only good thing you can do for yourself is align yourself with the Spirit of God. If you believe that he gave those prophecies, then align yourself with him so that in the fulfillment of the prophecy, you will be on his good side. If not, you may end up becoming a victim. You see? So now, there is, there is something I want to read to you in that Revelation chapter 5. When he... Thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 8, Revelation chapter 5 and verse 8 says, Now, when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, have each having a harp and golden bowls, full of incense, incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, look at the wordings of this song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal. You were, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. Now take note of us then and have made us kings and priests to our God. The intent of God, the plan of God is that we be made kings and priests. Now, so you are talking about a kingdom of priests. Now, why is it a kingdom of priests? Because it said these people, that's us, that were um, saved by the blood of Jesus, purchased by the blood of Jesus. We are going to be functioning by revelation. Now, if you follow those last months, I was talking about the manifestation, the revelation and manifestation of eternal life. And I shared things in the light that Jesus himself will speak to you. Jesus himself. That's the only way you can receive eternal life. It's not something that is packaged and thrown at you. It's a progressive walk with him. Hearing his voice, obey his instruction. That is how you walk in eternal life. You can never disconnect God from eternal life. And this is also another truth. The moment you disconnect with God, no matter how well you have walked in this thing, the moment you disconnect with God, you disconnect with eternal life. It's as simple as that. Now, God made it so. Praise God. Yes, he made it so. So we progressively increase in the manifestation of eternal life in us. Now here, the Lord is talking about opening the book and we find Jesus also as the only one who has prevailed and qualified to open the book and to bring out the contents that are in that book. Now, I also shared with you last week, I'm just kind of doing a recap from what we talked about last week and, and, and previous weeks. Now, you see, Jesus was the only one that was qualified to open the book. And when you study Revelation, when you go into chapter 6, and then he, he began to take up the seal, and certain events will happen. Those events happening are not the things that are written in the book. You need to know this. You see, that's how many of us have read the book of Revelation. Oh, so he opened the first seal. So like, when he opened the first seal, it's like he opened the first page. No, the first seal is not the first page. Removing the first seal, you've not even gotten to the book yet. The book is sealed with seven seals. And I told you from the beginning of the month 
the seven seals, why were all those calamities and, and different judgments taking place when he was opening the seal? It's for one reason. The devil will do everything to see to it that God does not open that book. Everything you read in, in the book of Revelation from the opening of the seal and all the destructions, the war, the, the scarcity, the death, the hunger, every one of those things were not what was written in the book. They, were, they are all actions and reactions from the devil trying to prevent the book from being opened. So, Imagine now the Lord is saying, and I, and I told you this on the first, I said, expect certain calamities, expect certain troubles. If you, if you go watch that broadcast on the first um, that I shared on the, it was shared on the second, but it was the, the new month broadcast. Go watch that broadcast on YouTube, just search for it and for the second of this month and, and watch again. I said, there's going to be troubles. Just the same way you read in the Bible that when he opened, he began to open the seal. Calamities, troubles began to happen. Expect calamities. Expect those things. But here's the good news. The good news is, it's not that God is the one bringing forth the destruction. No. The devil rises up to fight that the book be not opened. But guess what happens? The rising up of the devil to fight becomes his judgment. You see that now? So every, every arrow he throws becomes his judgment. Whatever action he takes will only lead to his judgment. So what you see going on in the world, especially in, in Israel right now, is, is exactly what's in scriptures. When the seal, when the, when the seal was being taken out, calamities, all those things began to happen. So you see the devil rising up first then judgment comes on him immediately. Now, that's what's going on. Make no mistakes about it. That's what's going on. Now, but you see, as a child of God, you must begin already to prepare yourself. And how do you prepare yourself? Number one, make up your mind more than ever before to walk in righteousness. Now, when I say walk in righteousness, what am I talking about? Align your works, align your words with what God is saying. Now, take note of this. We are in the last days. If you don't know it, let me, let me bring it to your remembrance. We are in the last days. And there are certain things that must happen. See, scriptures will never be broken. Jesus said every word will be fulfilled. All, all. Not one dot, not one title will go from the word that will not be fulfilled. Everything God has said must be fulfilled. So, as God's children, there is the, and, and, and we make these mistakes many times. So, we read the book of Revelation, we read the book of Daniel, and then we begin to look at calamities and every. Terrible thing happening on the earth. Now we use that to mark that we are in the end time. But also, you always forget, people always forget that there is the responsibility of God's children also that will harass the, the end time movement also. So we talk about the supply of the spirit more than ever before. But before the supply of the spirit comes, something is supposed to happen. If you read the prophecy of Joel, now the Bible is full of prophecies. Now take prophecies very seriously. At least know them, even if you don't understand them. Know them. Know that this prophecy exists. Right? So Joel prophesied, I shall come to pass in, in the last days, that I will pour out my spirit, and that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. But when you start the book of Joel, you will discover that that prophecy was not standing alone. That prophecy came after certain things have happened. You see? So before we get to that point where the poor, you know, people, you know, now people told oh, God have said, just like the day of Pentecost, Peter spoke and said, oh, um, this is that which was prophesied by Joel, that I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. 
Now, today, you still find people say, oh, God said this thing is happening in our days, happening in our generation. All the different revivals that have happened, they all quote the book of Joel. So, and, and someone who's reasoning, thinking, is saying, wait, so which one is the real fulfillment of the Joel prophecy? If you go study what Peter said by the Spirit of God, because Peter wasn't reading the book of Joel, Peter was speaking by the Spirit of God. When he stood up on the day of Pentecost to speak, he was speaking by the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost can never make a mistake. The Holy Ghost can never contradict himself. So when you study what Peter said and study what jo jo um, Joel said, you would, you would under and if you, if you know the words, the wordings of the Holy Spirit, if you know how the Holy Spirit speaks, you would understand perfectly what took place on the day of Pentecost. What took place on the day of Pentecost was the early rain that was spoken of by Joel. So Joel prophesied and said, I will, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That's what Joel says. I come to pass after that. See, maybe we should look at these things. Because sometimes when you speak, you know, you find people who get lazy looking at the scriptures. Joel chapter 2 and verse 28 Joel was speaking and he says, and it shall come to pass afterwards. Afterwards. Now this tells you he was speaking of some things that, have, that would happen before then. This is not the beginning of the prophecy. This is a part of the prophecy. So if you read this and don't read what comes before this, you, see, you will miss it out completely. So Joel said, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit. Take note that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Take note, I will pour out my spirit. Now, what do you mean pour out my spirit? That's pouring it out. See, now Joel said this. We're going to look at the things he said um, before this. That's actually where I'm going to. But before we do that, I want us to look at what Peter said. So you have this in clear context text. Praise God. Now, Peter speaking in Acts chapter 2 and verse, let me start from verse 15. Oh, okay, verse 14. But Peter standing up with the eleven raised his voice and said to the men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed to my words for these are not drunk as you suppose since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is that this is what was spoken by prophet by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Take note, Joel said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Peter on the day of Pentecost said, This is what Joel said. And then he look at the wordings of his own. He was speaking in prophecy. He was speaking by the Spirit. Look at what he said. I will pour out of my spirit. Now, pouring out my spirit and pouring out of my spirit, they are not the same thing. Now, if you don't observe these things, you will run into quick conclusions that will land you in error. So, Peter was speaking by the Holy Ghost. That's why I told you he wasn't reading the book of Joel. So he, the same spirit that spoke by Joel was speaking by Peter. But then look at the wordings. Then you will get the interpretation. Joel says, afterwards, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Peter says, this is that which was spoken of Joel. In the last days, I will pour out of my spirit. I told you earlier. Now to pour out, if, if you have a glass a glass of water and I say, can you please pour out the water in that glass? Now, what would you do if you hear that kind of instruction? You take that glass and pour everything out. But then if I say, kindly pour out of that glass, of that water in the glass, what would you do? You'll be measuring the pouring and asking, is this enough? It's this enough? You see? So, what happened on the day of Pentecost is what Joel referred to as the early rain. Now, the early rain comes. Then there are certain events that are going to take place after the early rain. And after those events take place, then the latter rain will come. Now, that's what Joel was referring to in verse 28. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So what happened on the day of Pentecost is simply the early rain. But then... After the early rain, what 
was supposed to happen according to Joel's prophecy. We're going to be looking at that tomorrow. Praise God, because my time is up. Listen, we're going to have a super great week looking into truth from the depth of God's heart. And I don't want you to miss any. And if you've not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so now. And then invite someone else, help, help me share this message and God will bless you tremendously. God bless you. I pray that today you will receive a visitation from the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen.